music. Hello, hi, hi, hi. Um, all right, um, I'll give it a couple more seconds to let people find out that we're live. I didn't post and do all the things that I should have done today. Today was a busy day. Um, but we have another special guest this weekend, a special friend of mine, and my child is here. If you can hear Sesame Street in the background, he didn't want to leave my side. But anywho, if you don't know who I am, I'm Natasha Hastings. This is Tea Time with Tasha. And today we have my friend, Jeremy Warner joining us. So I'll give it a couple more seconds before I introduce Jeremy and get the combo started. As always, please share and like the link. So we can get some folks in here. Um, what was I doing over here? Oh, bless you. Okay, let's get started. So, today's guest is um, a three-time Olympic medalist. I'll let him, I, I hope he remembers. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember. Um, but a three, four-time, excuse me, Olympic medalist, three-time gold medalist, and I think it's a silver medal. Um. He is the fourth fastest man ever in the 400, my friend, Jeremy Warner. I move kind of slow. I'm still trying to figure out like where all the buttons and stuff are. So, J-Dub, no what's going what's on? Going? <laughs> not much, not much. Enjoying the retired I mean. life. You're enjoying the retired life. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We are definitely going to talk about that. Tatlo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but they said they didn't recognize you without the glasses. <laughs> Do you still? Yeah, the glasses I hardly wear them anymore. Again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to. I used to uh, before all these masks came out. Now it fogs up my glasses, so I can't see. Wait, what? Like whenever I wear my mask. Oh, 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 oh! If, if oh, I have my glasses oh, oh, oh. on, it fogs it up. So, so at meets, so at, tra at track meets when I'm coaching, I can't really wear them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, J Dub, I don't know where to start with this one because, um, so a couple months ago, I had Tyson on, um, and Tyson mm -hmm. and I were training partners. You and I were, what do we call it? Agency partners? Agent? 
Yeah, I, I, I guess you could say call it that. So like, Jay, we were uh, represented by the same people. Yeah. So Jay was like another one of my big brothers in the sport um, where Tyson and I trained together. So we were together every day training together. But Jay Dub and I had the same agent, uh, Michael Johnson and Dion Minor. So agents. Mm-hmm. So we traveled yeah. together. We're pretty much in the same meets. Um, and Jay was the one who kind of like took me under his wing and taught me some of the ropes about traveling and, but you know, Jay was, was the big dog. So Jay would be like traveling first in business class <laughs> yeah. and I was the rookie back there in coach, but it's all good. He would wait for me. And sometimes I got the, the first class perks, you know, getting to come up in the line with you and stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, I tried, I tried my best to get you up there. You did. You helped out. You were, you were definitely um, cool. And I think sometimes you get um, a rap for, I don't even know, but like you were always cool to me, always, you know, to this day, you're retired. We're down the street. I know you're going to call me out for something, but you know, you're in Dallas. I'm in Austin. Mm-hmm. We're still cool. Mm-hmm. You still check in on me. Um, before we got on here, yeah. you were like, so... <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah. Long, where did the J Dub come from? Jeremy Warner. I, well, who who started? Do you know who started calling you that, or was that just a? I think it was Dion. Yeah, I I, I can say no, I definitely got no that one really called me that in college. I definitely got that from Dion. Definitely got that from Dion. All right. Well, anyway, so let's get into things. What what are you up to now? What I think we I know what you're up to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right now I'm just coaching high school coach, uh, head track coach, and assistant football coach. So enjoying that. Oh, we yeah, just had yeah, a track meet last night. Too. Yeah, yeah, helping trying to help out as much as I can. So I gotta try and get some athletes from the football team to come out. Yeah. It's the only way. Okay. And so I'm at, a, I'm at a small I'm at a small private school, so we only have like maybe 450 kids from ninth grade to 12th. Oh, wow. Those are really small classes. Okay. Okay. Are yeah. So I've got, I, yeah, there, I mean, there's times where I, I, I'm sitting there like, why, am, why am I here? Um, but then stuff like last night happened where everyone comes out, all the athletes show up and they give it their all and they run, start running PRs and cheering each other on. And then it brings me back to why I'm actually really wanted to be there is to help them improve and, and become better athletes and better people. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, last night we probably had the best meet as that I've ever had as a coach with the whole team. Uh, I think pretty much almost everybody PR last night. And so, some of them are now number two in private school in the whole state of Texas. So yeah, it was a good turnout. Well, I mean, they have the great Jeremy Warner as their coach. So has that, is it the same school that you've been at or is this a new school? Mm-hmm. It's no, it's the same school I've been at. How long have you been yeah. there? Which um, Pam Tyler asked where you're coaching Parish, right? That's the name uh, of the school. Dal- yeah. Yeah. Dallas Parish Episcopal. Yeah. So how long have you been and So we there? are, uh, three years as a head coach, and then I was one year as an assistant coach before that. Oh, it only took a year so, to get the. Well, <laughs> he he he. Uh, the head coach, the head coach was supposed to stay, but he got fired. So, uh, aye, aye, aye. but he's now. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still cool with him. He's he's one of my friends now, so he's out uh, coaching at a uh, Ditton High. Okay. So he's in public school coaching. coaching. He was a football guy. He played uh, at OU and played in the league for a little bit. Um, so the track was more like just a second thing. Yeah, a little you were suited for, for the job. I mean, and so, who else? And so I'm just I'm still trying to get our facilities better though. We have we don't have any pole vault pits. Our high jump pad is extremely old, so I'm still trying to get all that upgraded. Look at you looking out for the whole program. You are definitely a head coach. It's not just about the the sprints, right? You got to make sure your pole vaulters are good. No, no. Are good. Yeah, even 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 though we don't have a pole vaulter. <laughs> See, so, but I'm I'm trying to program. trying to host meets. Yeah, yeah I want to host district. I want to host regionals, uh, and then uh, 
a bunch of my coaches, they had a summer track team that they, they coach and they train there and they're trying to host a couple of meets during the summer there. So try to bring some money in for the school and help their program out. Well, what I'm hearing is that you're still the same Jay, <laughs> even though you're coaching, you're still pushing yeah. for the stars. Like, yeah. Go big or go home. Yeah. Trying to, that's all you can do. I love it. I love it. Good afternoon, William Green. I got to give a, a couple of my regulars some shout outs. William Green, you're here mm-hmm. every week. Thank you. Coach SWD0. Thank you, Tatlon. I don't know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> I hope I am. Um, Mike Larry, thank you guys for joining every week. Aisha, I saw you in there too. Um, keep sharing and liking the link so we can get some more folks in here because I'm sure Jay is going to drop some uh, gems on us today. But all right, so let's go a little bit back to what year did you okay. officially retire? Uh, officially, officially 2017. 2017. Okay. But yeah, I ran two races that year. (laughs) Was that a hard decision or like, what was it that like, you were like, okay, this is it. It it really wasn't a hard decision. Uh, you know, in 16, if I, at the, after the Olympic trials, if I would have said I was going to retire the next year, guaranteed, I would have said no. But after the my second race uh, at the MJ Classic that year in 17, I got to the 250, and I was like, no, nah, I'm done. That just stopped. <laughs> so I didn't even finish the race. <laughs> and you just made the decision. I was like, my body. Yeah. 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 I, my body was tired. Uh, I had nothing left in the tank to finish, to even try a kick. And I was just like, done I walked up the go chart and we both looked at each other i was like yeah i think that's my last race that's crazy <laughs> so it, it, it was that easy in the in the in the moment i knew i i was like i'm done i can't do it anymore i so, funny so but i do I miss think, it yeah i know you do because i know you are a track head and if i keep looking over mm-hmm. it's because my son is in here so <laughs> i'm making sure no, he stays I, alive <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm waiting for one of my sons to walk in here. So yeah, <laughs> um, but no, you are a track head through and through, and I think we both kind of like mm-hmm. you, we we did it for do it for so long. In my case, have done it mm-hmm. for so long that you kind of get to a point where it's like you can't imagine not doing it. Yeah, but then when you get to that point, like my mom and I and a couple of other, even my coach sometimes is like, if you have a great year this year, are you really going to retire after the year and this year? And I'm like, this is my final lap. (laughs) Like (laughs) I am done after this year. We've already extended it a year because of the Mm -hmm. postponement. Like it's, it's a lot. It's a lot with the training, the mental training Mm -hmm. of it all. Like it's, yeah. Like when the announcement came out for the postponement, that was the first thing that my mom said to me. She was like, "You're tired." I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> this is hard yeah, you, work." Yeah, you got a lot. Of, you got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. So okay. outside of track, you're all over the place outside of the track anyway. So yeah. Well, I've I, and I mean, I guess the pandemic kind of sat me down too. But I've <laughs> I've yeah. been like yeah. a heavy quarantine or heavy like. I've only been on one mm-hmm. plane since the pandemic hit, which, you know, two, three times for the month, we're flying somewhere. Yep. So looking back, though, what's what's your favorite memory from the sport? Apart from I'm, I'm going to take away the uh, experience because, I mean, if that is. Yeah, I mean, just. I mean, outside of 04, uh, you know, traveling, getting to see the whole world at the cost of the meat directors this is always a plus so i I can't i can't hate on that uh but you know just getting to see the different cultures and and different uh historic stadiums like berlin and stockholm um and just getting to buy your races in stockholm yeah that's one of my favorite tracks (laughs) One of my favorite, one of my favorite tracks. So I've always, I've always said that that's been by far my favorite. It it was, it was, but it was just something about that, about the stadium that I really liked. I don't know what it was, but it was always cold and wet every year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Except 
except in 07 when I uh, when I ran uh, when I ran 43.5 there. It was actually perfect conditions. There was no wind. It wasn't wet. It was sunny. Everything. That was the first time in, that I've ever been there that it was that way. How big was the diamond? But, that, that was back then when they were getting it, out diamonds, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, got, I got two of those, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Come on, flex on us. Uh, us <laughs> they're, 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 were a, they're one carat. So they're, they're not big, but it's the clarity of it's the carat. The clarity of and the, so yeah. it's, yeah, so it's like a flawless diamond. So, and you gave uh, one to your mom and you, one to you, your wife. Mm hmm. Yep. They both have them. So uh, my, my, I think my wife has Sarah has my first one and then my mom has the second one. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I knew as soon as I got the diamond, that's what it was going to be for. So but, <laughs> don't even try to claim it. You already know. Like, so, yeah, I already knew what it was for. Hand this over. <laughs> and so, so I guess we could. I, mean, I wouldn't gonna, I wouldn't do anything with it. We'll jump back and forth because that's a good segue okay. into like your your family life. Like mm -hmm. you are awesome on the track. Your resume speaks for itself. But one mm -hmm. thing that I see is that Jeremy enjoys being a family man. How to talk to us a little bit about that? What that's been like to to be able to be you know full time dad and husband. And I mean, I know you're coaching and you guys had your business and stuff, but mm -hmm. being on the road the way that we're on the road, it, it's tough, I imagine. So tell us. A little yeah, bit about it that. is. Uh, I mean, you, you have, you're, you're experiencing it a little differently than I am. Um, you know, I, uh, I mean, I've got three kids now. When I got married, uh, Bella was four. Um, and now she's 16. So, so, driving, um, and then, yeah, she, yeah, she's actually, she's actually a really, really good driver though. <laughs> so I, I can say that she's, she's a safe driver. She, she doesn't take after me. So that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cause I know you, cause you know how I drive. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, just getting to see her grow up throughout the years, uh, go from sport to sport. She loved tennis for so long and then she oh, finally yeah. grew out of that. Uh, basketball became her sport last year as a freshman. She was on varsity. They made it, they won state, the state championship that year. Um, and then this year as a sophomore, they made it back to the state finals, but lost in the final game. Uh, and then now she's in track triple jumping. So, uh, that's oh, what she's doing. And so, so I don't, I don't get to coach her. I tried to coach her a little bit because Sarah's getting question, mad at me. Like, what type of sports <laughs> dad are you? Like, <laughs> so, so with, with Bella's a little different. So I try to coach her, but it's, it's, it, it was hard to kind of coach her because she was going from she was in basketball off season and going into basketball season. So trying to get her to do off season track workouts. It, it just wasn't happening because she was tired. Yeah. Plus she had school on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but now I had my, uh, one of my coaches, she was a heptathlete at TCU. Mm -hmm. So she knows a lot about jumps. So I had her last year, uh, I would bring Bella up to the school whenever they didn't have school that day. And she would work with her a little bit, work on her landing. Nice. Um, and, but she didn't get to jump last year as a freshman because as soon as they won the state championship, that next week was supposed to be her first race and COVID hit and they canceled all the meets. Mm -hmm. So she didn't get to compete as a freshman. Yeah. So this year uh, during the playoffs, her track coach talked to the basketball coach and convinced him to let her to come out. And so she was doing basketball practice in the morning, going to class and then track practice after school, or it was, she would go to track practice at, from seven to eight and then basketball eight to 10. Uh, and that was, every day except for game day uh so her she was tired but now she's they had district yesterday um uh, for jumps she got sixth overall as a sophomore uh and her district is one of the toughest districts for jumps and so okay. they've got but she's out there she's gone she's gone 35 9 in the triple jump already uh okay. and she and she was about a foot away from the board so Okay, the the perks of having an Olympic gold medalist daddy. We, I know she gonna have. Hey, uh, hey, that, that that ain't me. That ain't that's all her. But I'm saying I can't. You can her up with the the heptathlete at, at your um here. He yeah. Show. So, uh, but not just.
I said, I, I've, I've tried, uh, you know, I've, I've reached out to Dwight uh, Phillips and I'm trying to get some jump, jump workouts from him that I can give to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so the good thing for me is I got, I know, I know a lot of people. So I just got to ask, I just got to ask the right people. Right. And then, and then my two boys, uh, Lincoln's now eight, and EJ is now six. What? So, Lincoln is Lincoln is all over the place. He's now in baseball. He just finished basketball. Played flag football. Played soccer. Hey, um, y'all are busy. He's he's y'all starting summer busy. track this year. Carpool life. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm having to. I'm like, so for the, the thing that's helping is the fact Sarah, because of COVID, she's working from home mm-hmm. and I'm at home most of the day. So I'll help then all three kids are virtual. So they're not in school. Okay. So I, I help teach, I help the boys during, do their work before I go to practice. Family when I get home, Sarah has, has Lincoln ready for baseball. I take him to take him to the game. Um, over the summer, I was help. I was one of the coaches on on their team, helping out. Uh, but since it's track season now, it's just a little tough for me. So I get to actually sit back and enjoy it and watch them. And so, and then EJ is just running around like he's crazy. So, <laughs> so my it. our hands are full. I love our it. hands are I full. I love it because I got so, to see like the super competitive, focused Jay, and then like now to see you, mm-hmm. dad, trying to restrain yourself coaching because <laughs> i yeah, can only and, imagine and and i'm the one that taught bella to drive she would not she will she won't let sarah, she wouldn't let sarah drive she wouldn't let it because sarah sarah was like did you not see that stop sign why'd you slam on the brakes <laughs> sarah sarah was so was so hard on her it was it was, was i'm sitting in the back seat just laughing you know, sarah, if, for those of you who don't know jeremy's wife is an attorney <laughs> I'm always curious about people in relationships with attorneys because I'm just like, what are mm-hmm. the disagreements like? But oh, every, Bella, everything, everything. Bella is yeah. also like she speaks her mind and she's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yep she <laughs> she does speak her she does speak her mind. <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. I hear it on a daily basis with her. <laughs> so, but that's who she is. That's who she is. She's she's always been that person. So, I love it. Listen, but, I mean, teach your girl to have her voice but, and not be afraid yeah. to speak her mind. So I'm yeah. worried. Ne- never will, never will. So <laughs> she's still trying to figure out what she wants to do, where she what she wants to do for in college and where she wants to go. So she's slowly getting into that zone now. Yeah, well, she's so, got time, but yeah. not really. But she'll she'll be yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, two years fine. So, so speaking of driving, I'm gonna get to you guys' questions in a second. Okay, because <laughs> this was a big topic oh, for us Lord. back in the day. I know things are different ah. now because your dad, but um, we we all I'm I'm gonna put myself in there. I couldn't afford the types of cars, but I like cars, mm-hmm. too, sports cars. So let's talk a little bit about what um. I remember you made a big purchase on a car. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about it. What's your, what's your favorite car? Why was tell us about that car? Do you still have that car? Uh, no, I don't have the car anymore. Uh, because of who? Sarah? It was my. No, it was. It, I had put too many miles on it, oh. and it started. It was. It was slowly getting on. And you know how I drive, so it, it was. It was getting to. <laughs> I was put. I was putting. I was putting the the the, uh, the gas in the floor a lot, mm-hmm. but uh, my my S class. Mm-hmm. Mercedes. That was my by far my favorite car. Um, but we traded that in to get our Tesla. Mm-hmm. So uh, love that car though. So it's it's, it's a different type of uh, of drive. Yeah. So I driven one because I, I remember I was like when I first saw it, I actually drove Atos, and I was like, mm-hmm. I like to hear my muscle. I like to feel my muscle. You turn this thing on, you don't hear anything. And I told was like, <laughs> it, it, get in. It, it took me a while to get used to that. It didn't take me a while. <laughs> I sat down and he was like, okay, so let's get out to the street. Go ahead and floor it. And when the seat sucked me in <laughs> and I felt the car take off, I was like, oh, wait, okay. <laughs> 
I might yeah. be able to yeah, do it's, this. It's a, it's a different type of power. It's a different type of power. It is a different type but, of power. But, you know, I, but I mean, you know, my cars have always been like all my cars have had loud exhaust on them. And that's what I like. And so, and so every time I floored it, I heard it. And the first time, the first like probably month of me driving the Tesla, it was just like, I was like, what do I do? <laughs> but then I, I got used to it. Yeah. But I, 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 I rarely, I hardly drive it. Sarah drives it all. But it, that's basically her car. I'm in the that's SUV like all day. You get married. And so, that's and so. Like, that's, that's married life. Well, not 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 just because of that. I got to carry. I got all this track stuff. I got to carry around yeah, with me. Carpooling it. So I got, <laughs> I got, I got tents, shot puts, discus, everything. Uh, I'm, a, I'm basically a summer track coach. <laughs> a one said, "What type of car was it? It was an S class, and then you said, yeah, S six hundred. For uh, I'm gonna tell the story because he's not going to tell the whole story." But it was something, and he's gonna have to fill in the um, the parts because if I can um, remember it, no, because MJ was our our um, Michael Johnson was our agent, who mm-hmm. was also like a mentor and just like another person who has a bad rap, but he's super cool, super mm-hmm. amazing. Um, th- so it was some car that MJ had, <laughs> and you were like, "Well, I can get uh, that," so I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, M- M- MJ showed up in a Ooh, at 05 USA Champs in in his SLR McLaren, <laughs> and he pulled up, and then I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I want I wanted to get one of them so bad, but that, there was no way I was affording that thing. But I got I I got the ride in it, and he hit man, he hit that gas so hard around this turn. That was the first time I ever grabbed the handle of the door. <laughs> he. Like we were at a complete stop and he just punched it around the curb and we hit 60 before we even came off that off that right turn. And I was just like, my eyes got wide. And then we hit the highway. Man, he hit the gas. He like Dion. So Dion was in another in in, a, in another car. And we were going to the same hotel from the track mm-hmm. from the Home Depot Center. And Dion had left oh, way man, before I us. That track. Yeah. We were going from one highway to the next, and we were on the on the uh, on the ramp. And we see Dion way up there already getting onto, already merging onto the highway. Man, MJ hit that gas. I swear within like five seconds, we were already passing him, passing Dion. I believe it. I believe it. That was our thing. So it was me, you, Mm -hmm. Daryl Williamson, we all loved cars. MJ, Dion, Mm -hmm. sit at dinner and just talk about cars. I couldn't get the type of cars that they had. I just had a little Infiniti G37S, six speed that I thought was the ish. It was red. But, but, hey, but but you drove it like it. You drove I it like drove like, it like we it was had. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I used to roll the windows down and play Britney Spears. Give me more. <laughs> <laughs> but cars was our thing. We loved cars. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh man. Yep, that's how it worked. He had the V12 joint. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. had a V six, but my 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 Infinity she moved like a, a V twelve, like a V twelve. Yep. What did I call her? I feel like I think I named her Schwazy or something. Oh wow! <laughs> I think her name was Schwazy, and I had the four hundred Diva um plates and yeah, I I was mm-hmm. a whole mess. <laughs> I, I think I'm like one of the only people that never named their car. <laughs> never, never named the car. So, oh man. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay, man, James Stewart, thank you for the super chat. Season sprinters don't lose speed, they lose endurance to offset practice like the sprinter, but add more unplanned endurance runs. Your speed is there, you will make the team increase reserve. Thanks, James. Um, so I guess we can kind of get into that. Um, because Jay asked me before <laughs> we got on, and I was like, this is stuff we could be talking about on the um, the live. I had my first race this past Saturday at Texas Relays where I ran the 200. Gun went off. <laughs> and well, first, let me back up. My hamstring was bothering me before um, like the warm up. But Jay, you can attest to this. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. it's my first race. I'm nervous. Everything hurts today. <laughs> like, you know, yep. so um, USATF was there. So I went and got it looked at. 
had it worked on before I started my warm up, during my warm up, and then um, in my warm up, like I pushed it. I was like, oh, I feel good. I feel quick. My my ham. I forgot about my hamstring. Gun goes off. I'm in lane nine. I take off. I'm like, oh yeah, this is Tosh pre baby. And I come off the turn <laughs> and I get up to kind of like, you know, get up tall to like sprint down the home stretch and my hamstring mm-hmm. grabbed. And I was just like, Ugh. so I backed off enough to just finish the race. So I ran 23.32. So when I saw the time, I came in last, I got ninth or eighth. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there was someone in the in lane one, but anyway, I saw the time and I just laughed. <laughs> and so, um, Afterwards, my mom and my brother were like, what the heck were you laughing at? Like, you, you came in last. Like, you ran 23-3. And I was like, because my hamstring grabbed. And I literally ran half the race. And if I could run half the race and run 23-3, like, I'm good. I just need to <laughs> hold yeah. it together, you know? Yeah. So, and and I think, you know, some of that is my emotional maturity. Five years ago, mm-hmm. I probably would, probably would be in the pits. But now I'm kind of... Oh, you were the man. Yeah. Now I'm like, yeah. girl, you definitely were going to run 22 something. You know, we just got to get your hamstring together. And, you know, so I won't do any more sprinting this year, though. <laughs> um, so I'm so strictly for it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I have to get a qualifying time in, too, because, you know, I had him in yeah. 2019. Then we had the pandemic. And. So um, none of my times are current enough, so I gotta get a time in. When when is the when what is the cutoff date? I'm not sure. I think it's pretty late though. I think it is okay. into the end of next month. So yeah. Uh, so let, let let me ask you this about Texas relays this year. What what was the experience like since there was no t- really no one in the stands? Well, that's not quite true. It definitely wasn't like past experiences. It wasn't like a a, a usual Texas relay, but there were people yeah. in the stands. Like another there people were. that like okay. I called my mom because she was there with Liam, um, because they said that they were going to be doing um, a family seating to where like you're only supposed mm-hmm. to sit with people in your household, but they want you to spread out. I mm-hmm. looked up in the stands when I came out, and I was like. I don't see no space. Are y'all up there? Y'all see those people? Yeah. And, uh, but she said okay. um, that they did come out and like, once they realized that how packed it was, that they started like enforcing everybody mm-hmm. to put their masks on. So. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And the athletes. I was, I was supposed to be there. Tested. Really? <clears throat> but they, I, I uh, well, high school athletes. I, I know. That's why I was I was I was planning on going, and then when they canceled, I was like, "Well, there goes that." Okay. Okay. And so, so I had a couple guys I was going to try and bring down for once. And so yeah. Any chance I can get I can get to go down there? I'm oh, going. Texas relays is so, a vibe. It's yep. Vibe. Yeah, Coach yeah. SWD. That's what happened. I backed off. Um, all right, let's get to a couple of questions. Um, Aisha Snow, Jeremy, do you think Allison Felix is capable of breaking the American record in the quarter or the the two hundred? Yeah, which which one? Which one? Or oh, or the answer for both actually? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know that two hundred one's way down there. So is the four hundred too. So. Wait, uh, what yeah, song is the yeah. American record? Is forty eight seven? No, yeah. I think she could do that. She can get that. Yeah, she can get that. Yeah. Um, but the two, man, that one's gonna be that one's gonna be tough. Um, but I think she's that. I think somebody will, if not her, I think somebody will get that for. I was about to say the, the way American these girls record. are running now. 21 yeah, low well, everyone's not. running. Everyone, she's <laughs> it's the same in the men's quarter. I'm looking at times nowadays, I'm like, I'm glad I retired. <laughs> Man, she's, I mean, when I was I running, it was lie. for the first, when for the first part of my career, it was just me. <laughs> when indoor collegiate was running this year, I looked at my mom and I was like, and you think I want to keep doing this? Look at what these girls, <laughs> yeah, they, they, and, and, and it, in my mind, I'm like, everyone is pissed off because they couldn't run last year yeah and so they they trained for a whole literally they just trained for a whole year 
and now it's showing. And it's just, I mean, nine nine seven in the prelims at Texas relays, nineteen seven in the two hundred, mm -hmm. and then twenty what twenty point one indoors. It's crazy. These kids are running. These kids are running, running, jumping, like everything. With the rest too, I think people were training but not competing as hard, mm -hmm. and so I think. Um, yeah. Coming back a little bit more fresh. I'm trying to help yeah. You out. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna let you answer this one. Why the 400? That that's, that distance feels. Like <laughs> I, I was already looking at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at that same question. Uh, I don't know. It's just when I first started running, my coach, my high school coach. I was like, well, what do you want to run? I was like, I guess the two and the four. And it just just stuck with me. But but I mean the way I mean you kind of know the way the way we train, it doesn't feel like death, especially when you run fast. When you run fast, it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like anything. When you, you run get, slow, you might as yes. well just run fast. Yes. <laughs> yes. I hurt the, the worst I ever hurt it was when I was running like 45 lows and like early in the season, or even if it's prelims. Those races hurt worse than the ones when I ran forty three. It's the truth. It's yeah, the truth. yeah, that's just. But I mean, you don't you don't think about it though. I mean, it's the way we the the thing that hurts the most is the training. Mm -hmm. The the meets really don't hurt. Yeah. So it, I mean, the way far. Coach Hart trained us. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, still hurt. But I do agree with you. You just have to say <laughs> train ugly to run pretty. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. It 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 is. Uh, Oh, okay. Thank you, Aisha. All qualifying performances for the U.S. Olympic trials must be attained on a standard outdoor track in the period Tuesday, January 1, 2019 through Sunday, June 13, 2021. All right. I got two extra weeks. Um, okay. Man, there were some questions up above that I didn't, I wanted to get to for both Natasha and Jeremy. Which meet was your favorite meet to compete at and why? I think Jay said Stockholm was his. Stock, Stockholm and, uh, geez, what was the other one? And Zurich. I didn't get to run at Zurich. I was there yeah. once, but I didn't get to run. Um, Zurich, Zurich, just the way Zurich was set up and how the fans are, like literally the fans are right on lane eight. Yeah. So Let's so imagine like imagine Drake Drake relays, yeah. But imagine Drake relay like Drake how their state how their that front row is literally on lane eight, and then times it by what fifty thousand fans. Yeah, yeah. There, so um, there was a. But what was yours? Um. So Doha was my favorite place to go to. I wonder, mm -hmm. Do you remember that first time that I went with? It was me, you, and Dion. Yeah, I only, I only, I only went once. So, do you remember when we got off the plane in Doha? <laughs> Son, well, Rick, sort of. It was like what two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, but Doha was just my favorite city. Um, favorite place to compete. Um, I'm probably going to say London. I like, I like running in London. I've had some good races in London and London, especially like the last few years, London has been kind of like my, um, barometer before I go into the, the championship. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it was, it was always like, I don't know, like I kind of learned that you know that that Paris and Italy those meets are like right after US trials mm -hmm. never a good thing for me <laughs> London was like that sweet spot of like enough time to go home rest get yeah. a good block of training in come over run a good race good crowd fast track come back home so are you talking about the Olympic Stadium or are you talking about Crystal Palace Crystal Palace okay Crystal Palace which I have a nice history there. My mom had some track records there. So I'm sure they did the okay. track over a few times. But um, <laughs> my mom had some some youth records in that stadium. So, you know, we had a little connection 
in London. Yeah, I keep, I keep, I keep forgetting your mom lived in London. Yep, yep. I keep forgetting um, that. Does Liam VJ VJ eighty five? I saw that you got here a little bit late. Uh, does Liam like track? Stupid question for maybe such a young child. But does he respond positively to the gun? The people running, cheering. Does he clap? Um, I didn't ask my mom. I'll have to ask her. But I make. I personally make an effort to expose him to everything. So, and I, I mean, I don't know how much of it he's retaining, but right now he seems to really like basketball. No, no, don't put that in your mouth. He's coming out there, guys. Um, but w I'm trying him with baseball, basketball, um, soccer. One second, let me let him out. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna have to stay in or out. You can't go back and forth. Ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna try him in everything, but I hope that he doesn't <laughs> I, I hate to say this. I would be just fine if he doesn't want to run track. Um but, oh, Sam here. Yeah. But if Sam he this to I'm a big um I want him to have his own identity. And mm -hmm. um, so with me running track, his dad having played football and we're both very accomplished in our sports. Like I would love for him to find something that is totally his. <laughs> like I, I don't yeah. want him to have the pressure of like, oh, your mom was so-and-so, your dad was so-and-so, you should. I want him to find his own lane. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try I'm gonna try to put a golf ball, tennis ball, volleyball, everything in his hands. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> So it's exactly what we do with Bella. Yeah. Um my brother's like guiding him out. Gorgeous. Crystal Palace is the best, but it has been forgotten. No, don't say that. Don't say that. My uncle also played um football in, in the UK. My uncle is uh Shaka Hislop. So yeah, we're gonna try football. Um, Jeremy, Aisha wants to know if your kids are interested in being professional athletes. Uh, at one point, Bella was interested in being a professional tennis player. Um, her, she was always talking about she was going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars and have a players, like twenty a, a twenty a twenty bedroom home. Uh, so she was way out there with all that. Uh, but now I think she's at one point she was wanting to do marine biology. Uh, I don't know what she, where she's thinking now. It, that was last, just last year and that might've changed. As for my two boys, I don't think they really understand what professional athletes are yet. <laughs> so, and so they're just, they're just love playing Roblox and, and stuff like that right now. Well, Lincoln, no, Lincoln does want to be a YouTuber. That's what okay, he wants to Lincoln. do. He could be a so guy. I might have to, uh, <laughs> I might have to uh, get you uh, down here soon. I, yeah, uh, yeah. Listen, I'm trying to figure it out myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll help where I can. Um, A1 asked, I feel like track stars are generally more appreciated in Europe than in the U S even though the United States mm -hmm. produces some of the best athletes in the world. Please comment. What are your comments, Jay? I agree. Uh, I mean, but uh, it, I think a lot of it is they don't, we've never really hosted meets the way they do in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, average, I mean, we, outside of college, like Texas relays, Florida relays, pin relays. And then now I think now they're going that route with being able to host world championships and stuff like that in Oregon and have the facility for it. We've really never had the facility, a track facility like they do in Europe. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they understand it. Yeah. And here we, it's, it's like, we try and make our track meets five, five to eight hours long mm -hmm. instead of yeah. shorten it like in Europe. Yeah. And so, but I, I agree with that. I mean, we're more known and respected in Europe than we are here. 
For sure. I definitely, <laughs> I always <laughs> talk about how like I've gone through customs over in Europe and I'll be recognized. The customs mm-hmm. officer will recognize me and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Can, can you let me through with this, <laughs> with this bag? <laughs> don't, don't charge me any taxes on it. <laughs> But because I used to do some shopping overseas, but um, <laughs> yeah, you did. But yeah, they definitely know us more um, over there. I don't know. I I don't feel like there's one single singular thing that contributes to why we're just more known over there. Or I do think some of it is we're missing the grassroots outreach over here. Um, and there's there's. So it's such a big disconnect because track and field is the number one participatory, participatory sport in high school. Mm-hmm. So then why is there no, why aren't they coming to professional track meets? Why we're, we're, we're missing something in the conversion. Here. Yeah. Why don't they know the professional athletes? I, I don't know. Marketing and, and PR is not my forte, but there are so many not, things. Not mine either. Um, the, the gap is just too wide. Um, AI, yes, the goalkeeper Hislop. That was that is my cousin, um, or I went from uncle to cousin. The story is the truth of the matter is, I am West Indian, and everybody in the West Indies is family. So Shaka's dad and my grandfather were best friends. So Shaka is my uncle. <laughs> Um, at the beginning of the races, when they say your name and the camera is on you, do you find that interrupts your pre-race focus? No. When no Jay put those shades on, there was no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize the camera was, I'm, you know, I'm always looking down. Mm-hmm. So I'm, not, I'm rarely looking forward. So I don't even notice them standing in front of my, in front of me. So it never bothered me at all. Yeah. I um, you get used to it. It it it's a part of the job description, so you you get used mm-hmm. to it. Um, Amber Johnson, hi Jeremy. Do you believe in wearing your spikes at practice every day or very often? We rarely wore them. You know, you that's know, how Coach Hart is. That's why I wanted Coach to Hart's... ask that question because yeah, yeah. Coach Hart. I mean, I think I put spikes on. Jeez, only time I put spikes on is when we did starts. And that was one. That was like once every two months. Which is what like we we hardly we we never did starts ever. That's why my start was was one of the worst. <laughs> but I mean, so Sonya it was did the same thing. But Sonia ran. What did Sonia ran ten nine and she got down to twenty. Yeah, yeah, but she, I think like even in college, I never worked on starts. Mm-hmm. And so and I think she worked on starts in college and I think she might have worked on starts outside when she wasn't in Waco with Coach Hart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, I, I, we just, that wasn't a focus of ours. Yeah. Yeah, I was always blown away that you guys just trained in flats and very rarely put on spikes. Um, in my system, we don't put on any so we we would typically start training in like October November um and we wouldn't we would be in flats we would also be on the grass um Mm -hmm. we would put in in, um January and like towards the end of January like I would be going to my first track meet and me putting on my spikes for that track meet is the first time I put on my spikes (laughs) Like that's how long we would go in flats and here and there, uh, we would do some workouts in flats, like an active recovery day, but we're in spikes at least two to three times per week. Um, once we're into the competitive season, Tatlone said, I remember he doesn't even look up when they said his name. Yeah. Jay used to be in a zone, man. (laughs) Jay used to be in a zone. But that's why I always got a bad rap. (laughs) Which is why I like to do things like this because I think track is one of the sports that, um, or it might be the one of the only sports that like I think we really go into a zone and sometimes we come off mm-hmm. unfriendly, but mm-hmm. it's like no, you 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 just see us on the TV or you just see us in the stadium, but behind the scenes. <laughs> We're yeah. all cool. <laughs> There's no beef. Yeah. You just saw me in my game face. 
Yeah, because as soon as I got on that bus to head to the meet, I I rarely talked to anybody. Nobody, not even us. Anybody. I mean, we. Like, yeah, I was about to say, not even you. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I wouldn't even like I I wouldn't even talk to my wife and kids late in my career when I got as soon as I got on the bus. Until so after the race, that's just that's just how I was. Uh, well, it worked for you. You were very successful. So yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember this. George Lewis, eighty-eight. Can I ask why you jogged the last twenty meters in Beijing? It was an Olympic final. You didn't jog, did you? Uh, a little bit. Oh, I, I was I was mad. Uh, I was mad. I. Cause I came off the curve and I tried to go and I wasn't going anywhere. And he was, and LaShawn was pulling away from me mm-hmm. and I was mad at myself cause I couldn't, and I don't know if it was all in my head or if I did something wrong the day before it, on our day off or whatever it was, I just, my leg, my legs weren't going anywhere and I knew I wasn't going to catch them. So I just kind of shut it down and you know, at the time it didn't bother me, but the more I, you know, I think about it, I go back and tell myself, I wish I would have done something different that day uh, towards the end. But I mean, it is what it is. So it was just, I was was mad. I was mad. I was mad. And I didn't want, but, but I didn't want the silver medal either. Yeah. That was the one medal. That was the one medal I hated. And now I accept it. It took me a long time to accept that medal. Which is so interesting. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about right. that. Because, um, and I, I did an interview last night with, um, I'm a plug, uh, Jasmine Todd. I couldn't remember her last name. I, w- I was getting ready to say Miss Google me. And I'm like, no, that's not her name. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that's her Instagram name. And um, she, you know, she did her research before we got on and she was like, man, like you have some medals and like you didn't get, you know, your your recognition for these medals, blah, blah, blah. But I always like to kind of talk about or talk to the people who are like, I don't want to say used to winning because I know you worked hard, mm-hmm. and you know, like, and we all have this level of expectation that we place on ourselves. And I always say like, I believe if you're lining up on the track, you should be there to win. And if you're there to do anything mm-hmm. less than gold, <laughs> you don't deserve yeah. that lane. In my opinion, you know, I think everybody mm-hmm. should be there trying to win. And I remember in 2013, 2013 and 2012, um, 2013, we played second in the four by four um, to Russia and then in 2012, indoors, we play second to Great Britain. And we were <laughs> like raked over the coals because Team USA, they're poor sports women, their face was screwed up because they didn't win. And it's like, yeah, we came here. Yeah, we were disappointed. We're mad. We came to win. It was what we gold. wanted. Like, that is our yeah. standard. Um, so it, it's interesting though, to hear you. Cause I, I can personally say though, in the individual for me, I was always like gunning for the, like, just give me something. Mm-hmm. And now I have two fourth place yeah. coaches that I'm just like, oh, I was this close, <laughs> but yeah. to hear like, no, I was mad. Like, yeah, I got a silver where I'm like, yeah. I would die for that silver. Yeah. And you're like, but no, nah, yeah, I, mean, I was there to do I mean, think, my title. I mean, it, yeah, that I, I was there to defend my title. I had won worlds the two the, the last two world championships. Mm-hmm. I was I was going, and that was really the fir- that season was the first time I had lost more than you know in Europe in a long time. Mm-hmm. And Lashawn yeah, beat and I me, I think, that, two um, times. Big, yeah, they, they were yeah. That was like a big, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was a big deal, and it 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 messed with me mentally a little bit. Uh, but it was, it was, it, you I mean, you're, you get so used to training for a certain thing and I was training to, you know, I had a big target on my back and I was, I wanted to win. And I also had other things in my mind to go with that win that, that were in like contract wise. And, you know, one thing was if I win. Yeah, and I had bonuses in there for if I would have won um, 
05, 07, 08, and 09, and plus break the world record, I would have had a huge, huge bonus. Yeah, and so, you know, I was, in our contract. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he, he put, he, he hooked me up with a, 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 a bonus that I, I wish I would have hit, but, you know, so I was thinking ahead instead of what was in front of me at that time. Yeah. And then what a lot of people don't realize that same year, you might remember it, the whole um, wearing the Adidas shoes on the podium. Mm-hmm. So you, I know, you know, I, I figured you'd remember it. Mm-hmm. And I was dealing with that going into the race. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I had people from USATF telling me not to wear my Adidas shoes on the stand. I had I Adidas telling me I have something to do. You yeah. To represent who and I had in your bills. Yeah. And I had Adidas telling me if you don't wear them, you'll be fined. And I had USOCs telling me if I don't wear the Nikes, I'll be fined. Either way, I was going to be fine. <laughs> and take and they threatened to take my medal away. And so I had talked to MJ and I told him, I was like, I'm wearing my Adidas. I mean, and MJ was, MJ backed me 100% on that. That's the thing about MJ. MJ will back you. You know, he'll have your back. He'll give you his advice. For his athletes, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, he'll, he'll give you his advice. And whatever decision you make, he will back you 100%. Back you on that decision, yep. And I made that decision, and I I came. So I ended up losing the race. And then the next day was the award ceremony. And I came to the award ceremony, did not have the shoes with me at all. I had, I had someone from USATF with a pair of Nikes. They had an extra pair because they knew I wasn't going to do it. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to hand me. I was like, I'm not wearing them. It's like, y'all can find me all you want. And you can take my medal away all you want. I don't care. And Adidas finally had told me, they're like, if you wear them, if you wear the Adidas and they find you, we'll pay your fine. And that's all I needed to hear. Yeah. And so, it, it, I mean, they do the right thing. Like you're in an, yeah, it, there's, a situation. Whole, there's a whole lot of, co- there's a whole lot of controversy going on at the Olympics mm-hmm. that a lot of people, that the average person has no idea no what's going on. Idea. Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately we don't have, because how strict it is in the village, we don't have the, the resources or we don't have our team around us at all times to help support us. So we're doing everything through the phone mm-hmm. and, and this you know, is I was also 2008 on before like Twitter just mm-hmm. came about yeah. that year. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. and Matt, like all the stuff they're, they're talking about now with, with being able to protest on the award stand, you know, back then you did it and no one even really knew about it. Right. And now it's, I'm glad they came out and said that you're, they're going to allow it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a huge thing that I, that I, I was actually shocked about yeah. recently. But but there's so many controversy it. going on. That's another. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so there's there's so many controversies going on behind 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 the stage, and you got US, USOC telling you one thing, USATF telling you one thing, your shoe company telling you another thing, an agent telling you one thing, and then athletes trying to convince you to go one way or the other. So, but I'm mean, not. I mean, that's the list of why of Liam it, don't run track. I am just fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we they get mad that we're not not smiling on the stage. But I mean, look at it. Look at all the NFL players that that didn't win the Super Bowl. You you see them smiling in the locker room. No, nobody's happy to lose. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's that's why we we compete. We compete to win. We don't compete to go for second. I sure don't. So, but so. Sure don't. Oh well. Um, there were a couple of questions here. Uh, Todd Lone, speaking of Beijing, how do you feel about racers diving at the finish? Did Did somebody dive in Beijing? Neville, De- uh, David Neville. Oh, he did. I don't, so yeah, 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 yeah. you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Dive if... in my race too, so that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if David actually dove, dove, or if he would just happen to be lean, trying to lean real hard and fell. 
And and that's the thing. Now, some of these, some of these high school, like I want to say the two hurdlers from AM. I he I think he dove, but some of these high school kids that are that are doing, they're they're actually diving. But you think on so? the on the world stage, I think so. On the world stage, I don't think like I don't I don't think David really meant to dive. It helped him because he ended up getting third. But I think he was he had so much momentum and he was leaning so much that he lost his balance. And the only thing he could do was to push off to to, to finish. So, I mean, it, it's hard to say. I mean, you see, now it's just like a common thing lately. Yeah. These last few years. I'll speak on the dive in my race. Like you, I don't think that the girl like purposely dove. I think that, and and before I go any further, a minute ago I said I got two fourth place races. If they disqualified this girl, I get a bronze medal. <laughs> so <laughs> keep that in mind as I go into this explanation. I think that the girl came to the Olympics. I mean, I say the girl, Shawnee Miller, Weibo, ran the race of her life. And anybody that has run a 400, you know. <laughs> That sometimes mm-hmm. when you run the race of your life, you fall. I remember mm-hmm. in the trials that year, I fell. Now it happened, it just so happened that I fell after the finish line. And I remember Otto asking me, like, why did you dive? Like you were already past the line. I was like, I didn't dive. My legs were tired and they were like, yeah. <laughs> and I fell. Like my legs <laughs> literally gave from under me. <laughs> I wasn't trying, like, why would I want to fall on my face? <laughs> And so yeah, exactly. I think, and I really felt like it was unfortunate because I was like, man, this is like a moment for this girl. And I think a combination of, let's call a spade a spade. Allison was the favorite. People wanted mm-hmm. Allison to win. And I felt like when Allison didn't win, this girl became the villain because she dived or jumped or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I hate that. I mean, I felt like, I honestly felt like her moment was taken away from her because it became this, should she be disqualified? I'm sure she was asked a million questions about it. And I'm like, the girl ran the race of her life. <laughs> like, yep. I don't think she did that on purpose. Like, <laughs> and, and again, you disqualify this girl, I become the bronze medalist. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think she did either. I don't think she did that and, on purpose. And, uh, I hate that, like how what that moment was made out to be because it's like she worked her ass off for that moment and yeah. now I, I had i had that same moment my freshman year at baylor at drake relays uh it was us in arizona state and i had got out way too hard i was anchor leg got out way too hard and towards the finish line he came up next to me and we were battling neck and neck i leaned and when i was leaning i fell i literally fell face first on the track mm-hmm. and it looks like, like on the, if you look at the cover of track and field news, it looks like I'm diving. But in reality, I was literally falling because I had no way You're of keeping You're moving my with that much momentum. <laughs> You're tired. <laughs> mm-hmm. Add a lean to it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, apples to oranges, but I'm still going to make the comparison. Like, you know, football with their rule about like leading with the head. And, and I get the logic behind mm-hmm. it. However, when you're and I think some people can't imagine it not trying to be offensive but some people can't imagine that you can't make the adjustment but you probably can't yeah. imagine it because you've probably never moved in the in that situation levels you know what I'm saying yeah. like I'm sorry mm-hmm. Pop Warner running a play versus an elite NFL player running a play it's happening a lot faster, a lot more powerful, yep. a lot more. So to be able to make an adjustment in a split second, it's a lot harder than it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, it's hard. And I, yeah, I it's the logic hard. of like, you're trying to protect their heads, their necks, you know, pr- protect them from injuries. So, you know, I guess the, the whole logic is to train them to not even go in that way. However, sometimes mm-hmm. it can't be. It, it's still, it's still a play. I mean, they're, they're both running as hard as they can, as fast as they can. And then he just happens to turn, and he just happens to hit, to dive, and the guy moves real quick. I mean, there's and then nothing the much you can do. on him, and it's like, but I couldn't yeah. happen too fast. What was I supposed to do? Yeah. So kind of same yeah. thing in track. Like you're moving so fast, you're exerting so much power, so much energy that like 
<laughs> you you probably can't imagine it because you ain't never moved that fast, <laughs> that yeah. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. Is diving really an advantage? That's the thing. No, it's not. Because if you dive, you're moving slower than if you were running. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you have to dip at the right moment. If you dip too soon, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you yeah. slow down more. So mm -hmm. that's why they teach you not to dip. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or do the Gail Dean. They teach you to run. <laughs> yeah. Get that uh, shoulder. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so we've gone past the hour mark. Um, I'll, we'll take a couple more questions before we let you go because we know you're full time dad and coach and all of the yeah. things. And I also have to go tend to my child as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, VJ, VJ, what do you love most about Pen? You were a Drake guy. Yeah, I was. You didn't come to. I only went to Penn Relays. I, I, I went one time. Yeah. No. I went, I went twice. I went 08 and 15 or 16. I don't, I remember you there. You came in 16. I don't remember you there in 08. 08, that was my first time. Yeah. William Green, yeah. Played high school ball with guys that went to the league. Their speed, how big they are. It's on another level. It's, it's on a whole nother mm -hmm. level. There's, exactly. As you, it's a whole nother level. Yeah. I don't so, know. So how you can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, exactly. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> there's no more questions. Um, is there anything you you got going on that you want to let us know? Where can we find you? Twitter, Instagram, websites. Uh, no websites anymore, but uh, Twitter is just just Jay Warner, and then Instagram is Jay Warner forty three. Uh, really, the only thing I'm posting on there right now is just all my my kids' results from from our meets. So I got a uh, I got a DN on my team. He's six five, about two twenty two twenty five, running the four. Why you got that boy running? Yeah, the four? he wanted to. Shut up. Uh, he. He came through the 200 at 25 and he ended up running his, so he's been working out for like, like seven to eight days, like basically a week. Mm -hmm. And he ran last night and ran 56 too. Why is he running the quarter? Six, five, two, two. Cause he's, mm -hmm. he, he said, he, he told me before the race, he's like, I'm trying to go 50. And he took out like he was trying to go fifty. <laughs> so he took out. I told him, I was like, man, if you if you if you're serious about this, these next two weeks are gonna be painful. Oh. But we'll get you down to fit we'll get you down to fifty three. So um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, we'll get it. April Fool's, man. I, I got my head on the swivel this week today. <laughs> Bella is crazy. I'm, I, I, and she hasn't done anything to me yet. Yes, she has. Uh, uh, to you and that, to you and. Mom. Apparently, she's already well, done something. Yeah, no. I just, I, no, I, he doesn't. He, I don't know what it is though. That's the, that's the thing. Like she's, she doesn't care who you are. She doesn't care your age. She, she'll, uh, she's, she's put in the past. She's put food coloring in, in our toothbrush. She's oh, yeah, unscrewed the, the ends of the sinks. And put and just like barely turn it on, holding on to where when it turns on, it falls down and water gets everywhere. Oh my god! And then my mother-in-law, she saran wrapped the toilet, so when she went to the bathroom, it got all over her. I tell you, Bella does not care; she is ruthless. And so all day today, I've been, I've had my head on the swivel. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't. Oh, I, I'm, para I'm paranoid on on April Fools now. Poor it thing. sucks. <laughs> No, that's actually kind of funny. It's slow. <laughs> no, it's it, it's funny, but it sucks, man. I'm literally like trying to. I everywhere I go, I'm looking before I do anything. <laughs> Stacy, so. I saw your cash app. Thank you very, very much. Um, where the, I think this is the perfect question to end on here. What was the best piece of advice you received from MJ? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, 
Well, I'll say this one. Uh, running wise, with with how they how they do how they do qualifications for through rounds, the one thing he always told me is make sure you win your heat. That's the number one thing. Don't 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 put it in the hands of the qualifying time. If you win your heat, you're guaranteed to the next round. If you win your heat, you're guaranteed a preferred lane. Yeah. So at Texas Relays, one of the Baylor guys went 1026 and did not qualify for the finals, but a 105 qualified. Because mm -hmm. the 105 won his heat. He went 106 and got second. So I and I told him, I was like, now you now you understand the rule. Now you understand how things work. Your goal is to win your heat every single time you step on that track. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the main, that's well that's one thing that I always stuck with me with through MJ, and he would tell you that before every championship. Yeah, I um that that made me. I had a different thing, but that made me think about. Remember in two thousand eight when I came to the trials without my coach, and MJ coached me through the first and second rounds. And mm -hmm. what did I get? I got fifth. I think I got fifth at trials that year. And I was like, I remember afterwards, I was like, MJ should have coached me through all three. I should have, because mm -hmm. you know the story. <laughs> we won't get yep. to, to that situation. No. But MJ, and that was definitely one of the things that, like, you know, we had my race plan, but whatever you got to do, win the race, win the race, win the you race. Know, as comfortably mm -hmm. as you can, but you don't want to rely on, um, you know, you want to have a good lane, all of those things. But I would say mm -hmm. the best piece of advice that he gave me was actually that every day is an opportunity. And he used to tell me practice is an opportunity to get better. It's a day mm -hmm. that your competitor has to get better than you. So if you're not at practice, giving it your all, you gave your competitor an opportunity to get better than you. So I have carried that with me since 2008 that every day is an opportunity to get better. And it mm -hmm. sounds so simple, yeah. so plain, but that's the advice that I got from MJ. And I, I kept that with me. So. Yeah. And that you, advice MJ. works for everything too. Yep. Uh, everything. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you for your time. Thank you everyone for joining me um, and Jeremy this week. Um, Oh, oh, thank you, William Green. Yes, go read my article on Ma Madame Noir. Um, I don't have a guest lined up for next week, <laughs> but we'll get some things figured out. Who I thought I had was like, ah, I need a little bit more time, but we'll be back. Jay, thanks for joining us. This will be thanks, here on YouTube. Thanks for having me. I'm actually also going to upload on IGTV. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us for Tea Time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.